So systems of equations. by substitution. And again, substitution is a secondary way of solving. It's still a system, so there's still two linear equations. Your answer is still going to be an ordered pair, an x value comma y value. But instead of graphing it, you're going to use substitution. And again, the reason we may use substitution is because you may get a fractional answer, right? You don't want to graph and then all of a sudden have to count your ordered pair and it's like four and one third, right? You're not going to be accurate if you have to count that on a graph. So systems by substitution typically eliminates that stress level or that stressor. So let's review that Substitution by definition, right? If you think of it in simplistic ways, if I'm gone, I have a substitute, right? Someone fills in for me. So a substitution is to replace a value. Now, does value necessarily mean a number? No. No, it could be a different variable, right? So replace a value uh, in a variable. Replace a value in a variable's location. I guess that should be possessive, right? Variable's location. A variable location. And I guess not really replace. Place a value in a variable's location. We'll make it possessive. So let's start easy. If you have a problem that says 3x plus 7, and they tell you that x equals 4, can you do this problem? Yeah, yeah the, I mean, this is elementary school where we started doing this. Three times four plus seven. So it's 12 plus seven. So it's 19. Right, pretty easy. We can substitute. Let's try another one of uh, 3 minus 6y. And they tell us that y is equal to x plus 2. Now here's the trick. And I know Mrs. Patrick said it, and I know I said it all the time in pre-algebra. When you substitute, you should substitute using parentheses. So 3 minus 6, and instead of the variable y, what am I substituting? x plus 2. When you substitute, you should substitute using parentheses. Because now... What's my next step? Distribute. That negative 6. So the 3 stays the same. Negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Negative 6 times positive 2, negative 12. Am I done now? No. What's my last step? Combine like terms. 3 and negative 12 go together. I'm going to put negative 6x first. And what's 3 minus 12? Negative 9. 
So let's put a little disclaimer in the middle. When you substitute, use parentheses. When you substitute, use parentheses. That's going to be the number one killer of every problem if you don't substitute using parentheses. When you substitute, All right, let's write down the steps. How do you do this? Well, step number one. One equation needs to be in slope intercept. What does that mean? One equation needs to be in slope intercept. What? Y equals mx plus b. One equation needs to be in slope intercept. Most of the time, that's already there. What if one of them isn't in slope? What if they're both in standard form? What should you do? Pick one <coughs> to put in the slope intercept. I'd pick the one that doesn't give you any fractions. If you're doing it and you get fractions, I would stop and try the other one. You don't have to. Either one will work. Step two, substitute what y equals substitute what y equals into the other equation. So if y equals one half x plus three, Whatever y equals goes into the other equation. Step three, distribute. Be careful with negatives. Combine like terms. Solve for x. So one equation needs to be in slope-intercept form, meaning y equals mx plus b. 
After it's in slope-intercept form, you substitute whatever y equals into the other equation. Then you're going to distribute. Be careful with the negatives. You're going to combine like terms, then you're going to solve for x. Then you're going to substitute again. Substitute the x value into the... slope intercept equation. You could pick the other one, but it's easier. So you're substituting twice. You're substituting whatever the y equals into the other equation, solving for x. Then you're taking that answer of x and you're substituting it into the y equals problem. It's double substitution. You're solving this time for y, and guess what you have now? What did we find? What did we solve for? We solved for an x, and we solved for a y, and together what do they make? Write the answer as an ordered pair. <coughs> I get it. Eight steps is a lot. Hopefully that's already done. Lots of times, step six can be done with mental math. Uh, you know what, let's put the examples on page 41, so just we don't squeeze. I mean examples on page 42. No. So go back to your table of contents and 42 is going to be examples. Substitution examples. All right, let's try one right now. Y equals X minus four. Y equals X minus four. And five X plus four Y equals 11. y equals x minus 4. And 5x plus 4y equals 11. Step number one. Step number one on your notes was 1 must be in slope-intercept form. Is that done? Yes. yes. 
I'm going to highlight it just so you can see clearly that 1 is in y equals mx plus b form. Step number two, substitute what y equals into the other problem. So instead of the variable y, what does y equal? x minus 4. So down in this second problem, instead of the variable y, because that's what y equals, I'm going to substitute x minus 4. So 5x plus 4. And instead of y, I'm putting x minus 4 equals 11. Whatever y equals, that goes into the other problem. So instead of y, I'm putting x minus 4. Because y equals x minus 4, so down here, y can equal x minus 4. After you do that, we distribute. So 5x plus 4y minus 16 equals 11. After you distribute, then you combine like terms. <coughs> 5x plus 4x is 9x minus 16 equals 11. Add 16 to both sides. 9x equals 27. Divide by 9. X equals what? 3. I'm not done yet, though. That was step 1 through 4, right? Step 5, I think, was solve for X. We did that. So now step 6. Take this answer that we got, X equals 3, and where does it go? into the slope-intercept equation. You could put it into the other one, but it's less work if you put it into the slope-intercept equation. y equals 3 minus 4, because instead of x, I'm using the value 3, because that's what I solved x for. So what does y equal? Negative 1. I'm still not quite done yet. <coughs> Last step is ordered pair, 3 comma negative 1. Yes? We've talked about this multiple times. What's the answer I always give you? It gives you problem solving skills. Okay, let's try this one. What? Wait till we're done. Try this system. Negative 8x plus 2y equals 8. Negative 8x plus 2y equals 8. Mm -hmm. Negative 8x plus 2y equals 8. Which one are we substituting? Do we have one in y equals? Yeah. This time it happens to be on bottom. If there wasn't one in y equals, you'd have to make it into y equals, which is okay. 
All right, so that means in this, this equation goes into the top equation this time. So instead of y, so I have x, or negative 8x plus 2, and instead of y, I'm putting 4x plus 6 equals 8. I substitute my value. After you substitute what y equals into the other problem, you distribute. So negative 8x plus 8x plus 12 equals 8, right? Then we combine like terms. What goes together? Negative 8. Negative 8 x, positive 8x, what happens to them? They cancel out, they're 0, so what am I left with? Positive 12 equals 8, is that true or false? So what's this problem? No solution. Why is it a no solution? They don't eat equal each other. What do you know? What can you tell me? What did we learn when we were graphing about no solution lines? The answer is where they touch, right? So what do you know about two lines that have no solution? What are they? They're parallel. Could you have an infinite solution question? Yeah. What would it look like instead of... 12 equals 8 is no solution. What would it look like if it was an infinite solution? 8 equals 8, eight equals eight or 12 equals 12. What kind of lines are those? They're exactly the same, right? They're on top of each other. They have the exact same slope, same intercept. These parallel lines have what? Same slope, different intercept. Good. So you have three choices again. You could have a solution, an ordered pair. You could have a no solution, or you could have infinite solutions. Which one do you think is going to happen the most? Ordered pair. 90% of the time. 